Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I had two things that I wanted to go through, possibly. Um, I want to talk a little bit about debugging and also about uh, the um, about uh, the, the function documentation here, basically. So I'm going to give an example of that So uh, here so that I can have that to point people to if they need some help. Uh, doing that. So kind of as a reminder, uh, and, and you know, if people have questions about the content for this week, you know, um, on recursion or things, you know, feel free to uh, ask those while we're looking at stuff here. Um, okay, so I got my dev box up. Um, so let's, let's go ahead. Um, and I did some of this on Monday, I, I kind of got the the people that were um here on our monday help session started uh so we'll probably repeat that a little bit here in this video um because i want to show using the debugger and um i also want to show the function documentation Let, let's do the function documentation first here okay so this assignment for oh, let's go ahead i need to open this up here so um, as usual, make certain that you open up the top level folder here. Um, assignment four is the first assignment where I didn't give you the function documentation. So what I mean by that is, let me open up the tests here first. Um, and uh, let's open up the final function to HPP and the .cpp. So yeah, I mean, before I gave you the, those, uh, that block of code, so these are code blocks like this, um, for each of the functions that you were supposed to write on, on our previous three assignments. So you do have to write your um, documentation for the function here for this assignment. Um, so let's, um, Let's get us started. Um, I think I kind of showed this last time as well. So the way you would start on this uh, assignment four is you would um, uncomment just the first um, unit test here, which is testing your factorial iterative. Um, of course, if you build this, um, it should build, but it won't uh, be able to link correctly. Um, although all you need to do to get it to link, right, is if in the header, if you have your function prototype, so in this case, factorial iterative is supposed to be returning a big int. Um, if you read the um, assignment description for this week, um, and you know it has a particular name, factorial iterative, um, and it takes a big int as a parameter. Okay. So uh, also, you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, last time. So this is an example of a type def. Right, um, so really, this is you can just think of this as a, a name. So big int is any, any place you see big int, it's just an, a, another name or an alias for this unsigned long long int. Okay, so an unsigned long long int in C and C plus plus gives basically uh, like a 128 bit uh, integer. I believe that's the like a long int gives you a 64 bit integer. And a long, long int will get you a, a you know a double long of that. So so the, the, that's the most amount of bits that you can use to represent an integer as as a native data type in C and C plus plus. Okay. Uh, and then we make it unsigned because we, we're doing this. We're using this big int type def because we want to be able to return the the biggest. You know, so we want to be able to create to. to calculate the biggest factorials that we possibly can with a native integer here. So by making it 128 bits, we can we can potentially calculate factorials up to size of 20 or 20. Anything bigger than that than, than like 20, I think 20 is the biggest. Um, so like if you tried to calculate a, a, a factorial for um, for 21, 21 factorial, it, it that doesn't even fit in 128 bit a long long int right but anyway so that's that's kind of the the best we can do so because these grow real fast right so if i multiply this by 21 it's it's, it's um an order of magnitude bigger and so on so anyway that's, that's our signature so if we just add that um, after that should allow it to compile but uh but yeah it won't be able to link right so um 
So if we build that, it'll, it'll build for us um, as usual. It'll take a little bit of time to uh, build the uh, unit test here. Right. Uh, but uh, it, we'll, we expect it to fail on the link here, right? So, yeah, I don't think I'll wait for that as usual, kind of work ahead while it's compiling there. So, so I normally do, you know, but I do suggest that you do that as your first step, right? So, so just make certain that, that the uh, assignment for test does compile, which means you got your signature correct um, according to the tests. But then to get it to, to link all together, we're gonna to have to have an implementation, but as usual, you should um, create a uh, stub implementation. So the minimal thing that you can do is just have the same signature, but just return something. Like, like, so we have to return a big int, but, but you know, we can just return zero, for example. Right? Okay, so it did, like I said, it did compile. Uh, it actually compiled the tests, um, and it actually compiled the binomial functions that CPP. Um, but when it tried to link together, it couldn't find this. So, so now we've actually got an implementation of this. So if I save that, if I recompile, it should only recompile the the, um, the binomial functions that CPP, and now it should be able to link together successfully. Right? But now, now if we run our test, we're always returning zero. So what? So it should. Uh, be, I mean, it'll, it'll be able to run these tests now, but it'll be failing even the, the very first test um, on line 34 here. So, Control Shift T will run. Go and look here, and, and, and I mean, as expected, we'll return zero. All right. So, um, so yeah, back to function documentation. So, notice, you know, we don't have the documentation for our factorial iterative, okay? So um, here, here's a, a thing that I wanted to point out. So there's another uh, make target here that you have available, um, but um, it's, you'll, you'll need to use a command line to use this. So um, if we go into our assignment four, You look at your make targets like make help there, there's something called make docs so this is the thing that actually uses the doc oxygen um, um, spelled there's d-o-x-y-g-e-n if you want to google it for some more information about it um, but but this creates um, you know textual documentation so basically like an api and reference documentation from your code markup so from things like these at tags and stuff right so if we run it now, now that we've defined this, but we haven't given a, um, so if we do a make docs, um, you'll get um, some warnings um, because, um, so here I've, I've noticed I need to fix this. Um, so it's telling me in um, the dot HPP that the, um, the, the big int type def isn't documented. So that's one thing, let me go ahead and add that first here. But it's also telling me that this member function in both the .cpp and the .hpp is not documented. Although you only have to document this in one place. So once we document this in one place, um, it'll actually get rid of both of these warnings about this factorial iterative function um, is not documented, all right? Um, so let me, said, and, and like I said, I should have had some documentation for here, so, so you don't have to forget these documentation. So for documentation for single things, you use three slashes um, instead of like a, a block, um, or a, but I could use a block as well, uh, but I'll, I'll use three. So here um, we'll put some documentation that um, uh, this is the type that we use for uh, calculating factorials. Um, so we use uh, a long, long int to get 128 bit integer. So we can calculate the largest uh, possible um, factorial um, and it is unsigned 
um, you know, because uh, factorials aren't defined for negatives. So. so they're not defined for negative integers. All right. So if I do that, um, if we run the make docs again, um, so I got rid of the 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 uh, the warning about the the big int type def here, but but we still got um, the warnings about the factorial iterative function um, not being documented, right? All right, so let's fix that. So um, so there's a particular format that you have to follow um, for your um, doc string here. So first of all, it has to have uh, two stars at the very, so it needs to be slash two stars. So the two stars are important. Um, like, like, so either, either you use three slashes for a doc oxygen documentation, um, or you use uh, slash two star, and then you close it off with the beginning and end uh, for a code um, block, a uh, um, uh, code comment block, right? So all doc oxygen documentation is generated from from um, comments, from comment blocks like this, right? So here, um, and, and then, and, and, you know, you're gonna have to get this format right. So, you know, I'll, I'll be uh, making you do this. So you need to give a short name for the function. So this isn't really just repeating the name of the function. This, this is supposed to be like a short one, two word description here. And then there should be a longer description, right? So um, again, I mean, you know, you should, I mean, I'm gonna be looking that you're, you are giving some thought into these, right? So, so you should be producing good code documentation. So, um, so, so these functions calculate the factorial of the given parameter in where factorial um, is defined as like uh, in factorial, is you know n times n minus one times n minus two times two times one, right? So something like that. But, but you know, and so the, the longer description here should be you know one, two, three sentence description or longer if it's more complicated. So but at least a sentence or two in here, right? So that's not it though, but but yeah, so you have a short um, two, three word description, then a longer description. And the longer description, you know, the short description should go on the same line um, after the two stars. The longer description should immediately follow. So if you have that, uh, by the way, I'll be running this in our, um, when I evaluate your assignments, I'll be running the make docs as well to see that you um, actually have given all the documentation here. So we still have warnings, but it's now, it's not warning that that the function is not documented is telling me that the parameters of this member are not all documented. So the parameters of this function are not all documented, right? And also the return type is not documented, okay? So you not you, you have to not only give a description, but you have to also document all input parameters and the return type if the function um, is returning a value, right? And that's where you use those at tags. So, so you know, we have a couple up here, but, um, um, for functions, you should have like a blank, well, a, 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 a line with only a star on it between your description and the beginning of your parameters. And it's just at param, P-A-R-A-M. And then you have to give the name of the parameter. So not the type, but the name, okay? Um, and you'll have to have one of these, you know, so here, in this case, we've only got one parameter, but you'll need one at param for every parameter. So if I had three parameters to this function would have to have three at params documenting each individual parameter, okay? So here in um, is a big int type, um, which is the number to calculate the factorial um, of, from this function. Right. I've got to do the returns as well. So again, you know, if if um, your function returns a value, it's, it's at returns with an S, 
Um, although in this case, I think maybe return or returns are both defined as tags, but um, um, and you have to give the type in this case, right? So, so there's no parameter name for the return value, it's just the, the return type. So you need to provide the return type. Um, So it returns the calculated of the input parameter in. Notice you should put two spaces, so um, you know should indent these a little bit. So, and again, you know these need to be like a sentence at least, or, or maybe a couple, depending on you know how you know, what information needs to be known about the input parameter and the return value here, so, all right. So if you have those, um, when you do a make doc, you shouldn't see um, any warnings um, if you're correctly, um, if you're correctly um, documenting all of your functions and the parameters into the functions and the return values from the functions, okay? Oh, and by the way, um, so, so this generating the, the documentation here. So um, what this does, um, if you look in your assignment four, where we just did the make docs, um, so it creates actually two sets of documentation, some HTML, so web-based documentation, and some uh, LaTeX documentation for, a, um, for generating a PDF file documentation. Let me just look at this one first. So if you look at that, um, you know, there's a bunch of HTML files and, and images and other things. Um, the, the root of this is the index.html. So if you double click on that, it'll open this up in a browser for you. And you can look at the documentation of your, um, of your code. So in particular, I mean, there's lots of ways to navigate this, but um, we could start like, let's say with the binomial functions.hpp. So notice it pulls the file header information here, so, so it's pulling this out from the top of the .hpp file with your author and, and the date and, and the notes that were in there and stuff, okay? Um, and here was the, the, the documentation that I wrote. Um, so it actually pulled the documentation from the .cpp file and put it in both places for both the header um, and you know, we'll see it for the, the .cpp file, but, but you only had to put it in one place was kind of my point on that, so. So yeah, I mean, there's the function signature. Um, there was the, um, um, the, the yeah, so it gives the short, the, the brief description and then the longer description, which I only had like a sentence there, and then your parameters and the return value. And oh, I wonder if it, um, I forgot to look, um, it should have, oh yeah, there's the documentation for the, the type def um, uh, right there that I put in that I need to put in for you guys and, and to put in there. So anyway, that, that's the thing. Um, there is also, uh, just real quickly, um, um, PDF documentation, um, although it doesn't actually build everything by default here, although there are some PDF files in here, but so you have to do an additional step if you want to see the, uh, the PDF reference documentation. So you have to change into that directory and do a make there, and that'll actually build the, the reference manual uh, for you. So if you missed that, that was just a, a simple make. So the default, the default target is to make all um, is to make all the reference documentation here. So in particular, the result is a PDF, which basically has the, the same kind of documentation, um, but um, in, in a single PDF file here. So, so yeah, we can look at the, the .cpp file um, or the .hpp file here. We've got our type def documentation and so on, right? So a doc oxygen is a nice um, tool. So like, uh, uh, when you get to the end of our program, you know, you might want to remember these tools because um, uh, when you do our capstone um, class where you have to do a software uh, development uh, project, you know, um, these kinds of things. You know, so using Git uh, revision control and using um, um, code beautifiers and, and using um, 
automated documentation generation are all good tools to, to learn and use. So. Um, all right, I'll notice that it also uses the dot md, the, the readme.md becomes the, 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 the start of the documentation. So that's just the general um, introduction information for the documentation for the project. So that's all in there as well. In this, so. um, All right, so that's, the, that's, that's function documentation. So you need to do that for all functions. Um, and also don't forget to update these things on here. So I've noticed that I should go through and update all these, but, but yeah, try and fix those. I mean, I assume everybody's using Visual Studio Code, right? But you should put your name in here and, and this other information and check that all this information is correct. Um, and, and you need to change that for um, the files where you are making changes to the class and the header. So in this assignment, it's just the binomial functions on HPP and TPP. You don't really need to do it for the assignment for tests or the assignment for main. Okay. Um, so let's make certain that still builds. All right, and then uh, real quickly, let me show you, um, so let's say that, you know, so right now we have some tests failing. Um, well, the, I mean, the very first one is the, um, the one at line 34 here, right? But let's say, you know, that, that um, uh, actually let's, let's add, make it just slightly more interesting or some day. So let's have it, um, let's have it calculate something for, um, So I'll just have a sum here, um, which isn't the right thing to do, but right. so I just kind of sum up the numbers from one to n. Right. So now, if we ask for the factorial of zero. Um, you know, so it's still not going to work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and fix it so it at least passes that one, right? <coughs> so if I ask for a factor of zero, it's going to return one. If I ask for a factor of one, though, it's going to go, um, it's not going to work. Um, so it's going to add one to one and it'll we'll return two, right? Uh, but let's try that. So um, let's build that. Uh, oops, had a number so equal to n. Um, Oh, um, yeah, so since n is a big int, it doesn't like comparing uh, a regular unsigned int to one of the, um, or doesn't like comparing a regular int to uh, the unsigned long int. So I guess we can go ahead and make that a big int as well. Build it. There we go. So if we run the test then, um, yeah, so it, it passes the, the one at 34, but, um, you know, we're returning to here. So let's say, though, that you can figure this out, right? So we have to do some debugging and, and, um, and correct this, right? Um, I mean, you can always do printf debugging, right? Um, so I could, um, I don't know, put, put a, an output statement in here. Um, Right. Um, so if you do that, you'll get these output statements. Don't. Uh, one thing, if, if you do do some print to f or, or output debugging like this, make certain that you don't leave those in for your final submission. Right. So you shouldn't have any output coming from your submissions except for that the, the output that's generated by the uh, the testing framework here. Okay. Um, so if we run that, uh, so now we're going to get a lot of the output from there. But um, but this can be a little bit tough to use uh, for the testing framework here. So so where we failed, um, and so, so it's a little bit tough to see. Like, so, so this one probably that came before it what was the output before we had our first um, failing test, right? 
Um, so yeah, it can be a little bit tough to do uh, uh, print out um, debugging uh, here, but but you know, um, if if this is causing problems, for example, you could we could I could comment everything out except for the one test that's failing. Then I would know I'm only getting output from that one failing test, right? So that would be one thing you can do to make it a little bit better to, to be certain that you're getting the output from running that test, right? But the other thing, what you should really do is, is, is learn to use your debugger, okay? So the um, assignment one, or, well, the, the, the main file, um, so by default, if you run a debug session, it's going to run uh, the code uh, in the assignment whatever main. So uh, the, the ones that I give you normally won't be doing anything um, um, or they might just be printing out some stuff, right? So if, if anyway, if, if you want to debug this, uh, the first thing you ought to do is you ought to find the test that's failing. So, um, um, and then try and debug that, right? So if, if my test for factorial one is failing, you know, um, I could uh, just take that one. Um, and um, put it in, in there. Although, you know, I just want to call factorial iterative, right? Um, and it returns a result. So I can say, get the return result, right? Um, and then output that like that, right? But so so the, the point is, is that, you know, if, if you want to debug something uh, and if, if it's a particular test that's failing, what you ought to do is just have that test uh, you know, call the, the, the function using the same input parameters um, that you're having problems with on your, on your test, um, in, in your test file, but put that into main, right? Now I'll compile this um, and then we can run a debug session, uh, but we'll be able to, to run our debugger and step through easy, more easily from here. So when you run a debug session, it, by, by default, it'll use the assignment for main. Um, um, in the debug session. Uh, that's, that's what's set up for the Visual Studio Code here. So if we build, it'll rebuild assignment for main. Um, and by default, it should stop. So, so F5 um, runs the debug, or you can do, you know, pull down run and, and, and do start debugging. Right? Uh, and it should stop for you by default at the very first statement um, in uh, the code here. So, so you see here, uh, it, it started running um, my assignment for main, but it, it, it stopped at the very first line of code before it executed anything, right? And at this point now, you know, you've got, um, um, we're in the main function and we've got what our local variables are, argc and argv um, are the only things defined. Um, and we've got uh, over here, so we can step through, step over, step into, and continue and stop and things, right? So what, you, what you'd want to do is you'd want to um, step over and then you want to step into this so, so that we can step through this code here and look at it. So, so yeah, if we step into this, we'll now be over stepping through our factorial iterative, right? So now we can see that, that our input parameter was one, so n was one here, right? And we just define our local variable called result, or res, and, and result has a value of one, right? So remember, we, the, the test was expecting that the factorial of one should return one, right? And we're gonna be returning whatever is a result. So if you step through here, you'll see um, that it goes in here. We get to our output statement. Um, so anything you output um, will show up on the terminal here. So there, we just saw the output statement from this. Um, if we step one more, we're going to increment results by adding in the current value of number, which right now number has um, 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 two. Is that right? Probably is just one. It's um, probably displaying slightly off here. So. Um, oh, it's already it's already added in one, so result is two now. So, so yeah, it it had actually kind of already done those. So, um, hmm, yeah, it looks like we've got some optimization turned on, so we might need to turn that off so that we don't lose that. But but anyway, that that's kind of the way. And then you know, right? So we can continue on or stop our debugger or whatever. So I'll continue.
Um, Oh yeah, that's right. We are doing some optimization. I'm gonna have to check that as well. Because yeah, when you turn on some optimization, it can interfere with the, the you know, it'll optimize out some stuff. It'll make it a little, a little tough to see those things in the debugger. And, and that's kind of one of the things that just happened there. But um, all right. Um, anyway, that's, that's kind of um, all the things that I was thinking about uh, talking about here uh, today. So, you know, um, real quickly to summarize, I'll make certain that you do have the function documentation right? Um, um, you have to put it in in the right format. You need these two stars. These should all be lined up. Um, actually, I, you know, I, I think that our code style checker, uh, whenever you save, uh, will probably format that for you the correct way. But yeah, these should all be lined up on the first star. Um, you should have a, a short two, one, two, three word description after the two stars on the first line, and then one or a couple of sentences longer description after that. Uh, and they need to document all the parameters and all the and, and the return value if there's a return value in the function. Um, and then secondly, right, um, if you if you need to do some more extensive debugging, use the assignment for main. Put in the the the, the single test that you want to debug that, that you're having trouble with or that's failing. Right, a call to it. <coughs> um, and um, and yeah, use the F5 or the run start debugging to. Um, to step through and, and, and look at your function and look at the values of local variables and things like that. All right, so that's it for uh, the sub session. Um, yeah, and as, as usual, you know, if you have any questions, just uh, email them to me um, or let me know here. Uh, but um, otherwise, um, that's it, and I will see you guys um, for our next session. <laughs>